You know, what people don't realize is like, they want everything so instantly, you know? They don't want to really spend the time to earn it. Greatness is like dedication. Greatness is being inspired. And motivation comes from here and inspiration comes from here. That's one of the biggest lessons I ever learned. Absolutely the mind leads the body. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever about that. Something has to run this. You have to have consciousness, otherwise this doesn't work. If I was to let the body tell me what I could do, after my back surgery, I would have just given up. The biggest thing is just knowing like, hey, if I'm gonna get through this, the body is gonna follow how I direct it. And where is that direction coming from and who's directing it? It's like, let's get this right and the rest will follow. I was born in uh, Thousand Oaks, uh, which is kind of like north of LA and inland, you know, not near a beach. First seven years of my life were there. I was just playing in the country. We lived in a pretty simple home and backed up the mountains. And then my mom ended up moving in with my stepdad and we moved to Oxnard Shores. And we all lived and slept in the same room. It was a very small one bedroom apartment, but the house was on stilts on the sand, so waves would come under our house. That's kind of where I fell in love with the ocean. Every single day, it was straight to the beach. I was just born with uh, something called spondylolisthesis, and it's where your vertebrae, as you get bigger, it grows further and further out. My last vertebrae, L5, got to a point where it was like pinching my sciatic nerve really bad, like cutting it. The doctor that did my surgery is like, you're never gonna surf again. You should like realize that, know that. If you've messed this up, you're gonna be paralyzed from the waist down. I had a brace, like a turtle shell that went from my chest to my knees that I had to wear every day, 24 hours a day. I had a hard time with that. There was this little book that my friend who was a pro surfer that was like my mentor growing up, he kind of threw it my way and I was home every day, right? So I was just like, okay, I'll just read this book, whatever. Psychology of Winning, it was called. And I think the author's name was Dr. Dennis Waitley. And it was basically all about being positive. I went from being in a real dark place to where I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm gonna cure this thing. I mean, how you feel is how you're gonna heal. The back surgery, I was like willful, spiteful, angry, you know, like, like everyone telling me no. Everyone, there was no one, I didn't feel like anyone supported me. Even my parents were like, I don't know, man. You just might wanna just go to college, you know, like give up this dream. Everyone was basically telling me you're crazy. And I was like, hey, yeah, this kid from Carlsbad High wants to like go and be on the world tour. I don't know why that's so crazy. Like all these other guys on tour came from somewhere, you know, why can't it be here? It was hard, you 
know, because when you have all these people from the outside telling you, oh, you should win more, oh, you should have had a title by now, like, those are nice things to say, but it actually added more pressure. And I would try harder, you know, I'd train more. I just didn't understand, you know, I thought you work hard, and if it's not working, you work even harder. Instead of having, like, maybe some time of reflection, even the off season, I was like training my ass off. And Taylor Steele was on tour with us and stuff, and we were filming for all his movies on the side. That was inspiring. Like going surfing with the boys outside of the heat was even more inspiring for me. And the competition thing was great when you had a great heat, but there's more losses than wins, you know? And the losses were like a double loss. I was like, oh God, now I'm over here. I lost early and I've missed out at home. It was compounding. It was always outside of me. And what I realized later was like, no, it's, it's about looking inside you. My life looked amazing on paper. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. I know it looks great on paper, but I'm not happy inside. I feel like I'm fighting some invisible enemy in me. It's me. How do I figure me out? It's not gonna come from someone else or somewhere else. It's gonna come from me just taking a good hard look at myself and what works for me and what doesn't. As a human, you should want to evolve. People don't evolve. They get stuck in these programs or looping with ways of thinking. For me, I was like, God, there's gotta be a way to be better and better and chip away at what isn't me. Why am I running my awareness through these old patterns? The Keeley has been this journey of like, understanding myself. We call it the Keeley meditation practice, but the Keeley itself is an understanding of the difference between the brain and the mind. Once you learn how to get into mind, you can begin to actually see independent of everything that has been taught to you. The practice itself only takes about five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night as you begin to detach from everything outside you, you begin to drop into everything that is you inside yourself. You're connecting to a place that you don't spend much time at. I think what I did was I just lost things that weren't me. I was able to let stuff go that wasn't useful for me. As you start to get out of the brain and into the mind, you will start to have realizations about things in your life that you would like to change. Once you realize that most of the things you want to change are associated with blocks, then the realizations become, how can I move forward? On your own, you can begin to open your mind to things you couldn't even dream of. After a while, I was like, God, you know, I'm training so hard that when I go surfing, I'm kind of tired. I don't like that, you know, like I want good movement. I want to be super strong, but I want to be flexible. So I met Mike Rintala and he's one of the best in the country. Luckily, he lives close by. 
He opened my eyes to a whole level of strength, and I haven't seen that before. I haven't felt that way, you know? All right, so let's come up. We'll just do some stuff to kind of uh, calm things down. And the People come to DNS for different reasons. One, usually they're in pain or they have some sort of injuries. But then there's also patients more and more coming for performance enhancement. Dynamic neuromuscular stabilization, or DNS, helps you find those postural foundations that were developed during the first years of life and helps you keep doing the activities that you want to do pain-free and efficiently. Keep that, push the mat away, push away here, and as you go down. I've been working with Taylor maybe five or six years now, and when he first came, he had that combination of repetitive use, past injury, didn't feel like he could surf how he wanted to surf anymore. Arm goes out to the right, turn. His work ethic and his consistency and ability to work with these positions and integrate these concepts and principles enabled him to really maintain that level of performance. You look at him now, this is movement efficiency, his fluidity uh, has improved. It was a huge unlock. I, I honestly don't feel like I would be where I'm at kind of shows like with my surfing now you know it's like I shouldn't be able to surf the way I do it doesn't make any sense with what's in my back and what's in my knee I've got a lot of metal in my body I've had a lot of surgery a lot of scar tissue none of this stuff to the doctors makes sense you know even the doctors that did my surgery are like I never thought you'd get that much range back Taylor Knox at 52 is still pushing the boundaries on performance surfing. It's inspiring to see someone put so much dedication into something they love.
It used to be when I was younger, it was about quantity. Now it's about quality. It's gone from getting through things with stubbornness and will to getting through things with patience and focus. I hope who I am as a person precedes my surfing and anything that I've done. Because there's who you are in life and there's what you do in life. Which one's more important? For me, it's who you are. I mean, talent never stops coming, right? But who with that talent can actually inspire people to be better. The ego wants to be better than someone. The intellect wants to be smarter than someone. The mind wants to feel good just to feel good. I realized that I should just be happy with where I'm sitting right now. It's not based on like what I don't have or what someone else has that I don't or I could work harder to get more. More of what? I want more harmony inside myself. That's what I want more of. Look within yourself instead of like looking outside of yourself for all the answers, you know? I want to be someone that they look back and go, well, yeah, I mean, he was a good surfer, but like he was actually a better person. <laughs>